Hello everyone and welcome to another video. This is Dr. Ayan from the Veterinary Anatomy Channel. In this video, we will continue talking about the structures of the head of the ox. So let's get started. After we remove the cutaneous muscle of the face or the facial cutaneous muscle and the levator nasolabialis muscle, here we can see these three muscles again. The first one is the levator labi superiors or levator labi maxillars. This is the depressor labi superiors or the depressor labii maxillars in between we have this muscle with a lot of tendons is the canine muscle this is the canine muscle or musculus caninus uh, here we have of course the zygomaticus muscle we have the malaris muscle here this is the the facial artery and vein um, in this area under the zygomaticus muscle we have the buccinator muscle uh, and finally here we have the depressor muscle of the lower lip um, in the caudal area here we dissected and made sure to see the masseter muscle is hugely developed in the uh, ox after removing the superficial structures here we can uh, also see the uh, parotid gland in front of the parotid gland we have this gland here uh, uh, this lymph node uh, the parotid lymph node uh, from the parotid gland here we can see the parotid uh, duct to transport the saliva to the mouth uh, just behind and under the parotid gland here we can see the uh, the mandibular gland is also huge as you can see start from here up to there so this is all the mandibular mandibular gland in front of the mandibular gland we have the mandibular lymph node in this area here here we have a part of the external jugular vein which is formed by as you can see here the maxillary vein and the lingofacial vein the lingofacial vein they meet together to form the external jugular vein here i just want also to mention this muscle here this is the sternomandibular muscle in the ox and serves to the mandible and uh, somehow continuous with the uh, masseter muscle to the lateral side of the face this is the sternomandibular muscle sternomandibular muscle again here we can see the different small muscles of the external ear and here i just dissected the parotidal auricular muscle uh, to be able to see the parotid gland from the name parotido auricular extends between the parotid gland and the external ear so we talked about the parotid gland we talked about the mandibular gland and here in this area we can also see another uh, I hope it's clear so another salivary gland uh, located in this area this is the buccal uh, salivary gland the buccal salivary gland is covered here with the depressor of the lower lip uh, so it's also huge and developed in the ox between uh, the two uh, bars of the mandible there show you so we have one muscle this muscle here is the mylohyoideus muscle Mylohyoideus muscle extends between the two parts of the mandible. Mylohyoideus muscle. So here we remove the superficial muscles, including the zygomaticus muscle and the levator nasolabialis. Here we can see again the um, levator muscle of the upper lip, depressor muscle of the upper lip, and uh, buccinator muscle, and uh, the depressor muscle of the lower lip. Let's move to this area here now. Uh, after removing the malaris muscle, which was here in this area, here we can see how huge and very developed, you know, the masseta muscle, which if we dissect it more you can see that it has also superficial and deep part here in this area this is all the masseter muscle in the ox 
because of the specific situation of the f uh, of the skull and the huge frontal uh, bone in this case uh, the temporal fossa is very small here and this is the area where we can see this muscle called the temporal muscle the temporal muscle originates from this fossa the temporal fossa and inserts to the uh, coronoid process of the mandible so here if you put your finger here i can palpate as you can see i can palpate the coronoid process of the mandible which move there and this is the insertion area of the temporal muscle again we are talking about mastication muscles the first one is the masseter and this one here is the temporal muscle is also and mastication muscle and mastication muscle another mastication muscle could could be seen here uh, which is the digastricus muscle i will move after the the head so a little bit so that we can so that we can uh, see this muscle so if we move the head in this direction here we can see the digastricus muscle and from the name the digastricus muscle has two pillies as you can see here this is one and this is the other one here so the digastricus muscle originates somehow from the baracondylar process of the skull as you can see here and inserts to the uh, medial surface of the mandible here in this area of course the same on the other side um, the digasticus again i hope it's clear in the picture let, let, so here uh, we, we can see also the stylohyoid muscle let's move it to the side and let's keep everything like this and now it's very clear this is the digasticus muscle one two pillies digasticus muscle is also one of the mastication muscles here as we are here we can also see um, another mastication muscle let me just move it to this side here uh, which located or inserts to the medial surface of the mandible and this is the tyreoid muscle we have in this area here lateral and medial tyreoid muscle this is the medial one so medial tyreoid muscle is also one of the mastication muscles again here in this area i just want to show you some other structures so here we can see this very big artery this is the common carotid artery this is the common carotid artery responsible for the blood supply of the complete head the common carotid artery if you follow it you can see that uh, this one gives here the internal carotid artery and the external carotid artery from the external carotid artery here external carotid artery the first branch toward the face is the lingofacial trunk so this is the lingofacial trunk and the second big branch is the maxillary artery maxillary artery again so common carotid artery gives internal carotid artery to the brain and the external carotid artery from the external carotid artery and in this case there is a small branch here so we have the um, lingofacial trunk and the maxillary artery at this level here while dissecting you can find another two important structures the first one is this one here this is the hypoglossal nerve this is the hypoglossal nerve which is the cranial nerve number 12 cranial nerve number 12 and you can find another structure more deeply there is the glossopharyngeal nerve so this is the cranial nerve number nine and the way that if once we go deeper there and we will do that in the next video we will dissect the three structures which moves together one artery in the middle the the, the which is uh, the lingofacial trunk and uh, uh, above the uh, lingofacial trunk we have the glossopharyngeal nerve and below it we have the hypoglossal nerve yeah
So this is the structures which we, uh, we can see in this area. Here, cranially, again, we can see the myelohyoid muscle connect the both parts of the mandible and up to the base hyoid bone, which is located here. Okay? And stylohyoid muscle. Okay. Let's move back to this area here. Just let's go through the rest of the structures which we can see here again. This is very important here. Here we can see the barotid gland. It's a salivary gland uh, for the production of saliva. The salivary the saliva will be transported from this. If you if you look at the medial surface of the barotid gland you will see the barotid duct and if you follow the barotid duct it moves medial or the, uh, ventral to the masseter here and uh, it enters this is the barotid duct here it enter uh, enters the mouth at this level here this is the barotid duct the barotid duct in front of the barotid uh, gland we have the barotid lymph node and here so it's also very important to mention that we cut uh, the external ear at this level and here we can see the external acousticus meatus.